Top of the morning, Dan and in for Amy J is former state rep, gubernatorial and congressional candidate Jeannie Ives, who now uh, operates a business called Breakthrough Ideas, breakthrough-ideas.com, a content uh, messaging house. On Friday, we talked about uh, take several seats, Spice Girl, socialist Spice Girl, Cori Bush, one of the new additions to the band, uh, talking about uh, private security for the defund, or for me, defund police for thee, and uh, making the allegation that she is uh, under threat of death, including from sworn police officers. Congresswoman, have you had police officers threaten you? <laughs> Absolutely. But presumably, Congresswoman, I would hope that those, uh, uh, as you allege, those police officers would be removed, or at least you would let your security detail and the mechanisms in place in Congress to ensure that those officers are not still patrolling the streets. Well, you know, it's work is being done. You know, there's nothing that comes in that that um, is not being handled. So we're, we're fine. Yeah, we're fine. We'll so, keep moving. No, no problem. So, again, um, I am under threat of death from police officers, but it's no big deal. Very credible. Uh, she was on with Dana Bash, uh, State of the Union over the weekend, CNN, for to enjoy more shilling by the D.C. press corps for her, asking for clarification on her remarks because she's become a bit of a messaging problem for the Democrat socialists. And um, this is what she had to say. I think what we have to look at is the fact that I made it to Congress in in 2020. I was elected to Congress and we're still fighting this same fight. We're still fighting to save black lives. That was not that work was not done before I got here. This is the reason why I ran was to save lives, to save my son's life. It was because Michael Brown, who we're fighting for, can still trying to get justice for, um, it's because he didn't get justice and Von Derrick Myers didn't get justice and Kajim Powell didn't get justice and so many others. That is why. And because that was not, that was not fixed before I got here, to then come at me and say, you're the reason why we have these problems. No, the, the, the reason why we have these problems is because those that were in power and could have fixed this problem before now didn't and cost it cost lives my job is to save lives the lives well, in my community because when we're when we're talking about every single year increasing the budget for police and then and then and then the budget for like health and human services continuing to shrink and st louis being number one for police violence year after year after year number one number two for homicides year and year after year one. so when, when we're adding more money to the police but but we're still dying. So Congresswoman, something has to change. I, I, but, but Dan, you know what? She wears the T-shirt that says rebel, and she wears the hat that says good trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, it, it'd be interesting if somebody could interrupt her messianic complex for just a second to say, you said police officers are threatening your lives. Mm-hmm. Be specific. Uh, can you present an email, a voicemail? Can you provide a name? That's a serious charge. Yeah, you're right. And by the way, you're right about St. Louis. St. Louis is um, a war zone, uh, actually a higher murder per capita rate than Chicago. That's how bad St. Louis is. That's the fault of police. What we need fewer police. We need no police, I guess, in Cori Bush's mind. That would remedy the violent crime problem in St. Louis. Okay. All right. That's what you're going with. Okay, sure. All right, we'll see you on Election Day. For more on this, we're pleased to be joined by Lieutenant Colonel Jim Carafano, VP of the Catherine and Shelby Cullum Davis Institute for International Studies at the Heritage Foundation and author of the recently released book, Brutal War, Jungle Fighting in Papua New Guinea, 1942. Jim, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, great to be with you. So um, the uh, defund the police, I wouldn't say it's, it's, um, it's gathering steam, but it's still um, being provided a lot of hot air from members of Congress like Cori Bush. I mean, some incredible statements that have largely gone unchallenged over the last several days. Well, and as you know, I, I work on this issue a lot because one of the things we work on is homeland security and, and public safety is an extension of that. So peace and security in American communities is, is, is part of what makes a nation free, safe, and prosperous. So it's something we really have to pay attention to. Um, you look, just the raw data just completely disagrees with her. Um, there is no, there is no correlation 
between spending more money on police and increasing crime. There's just none. There's factually none. There is a, a lot of correlation between taking police off the streets and accelerating crime, all of which has occurred, by the way, since she came into Congress, um, or a lot of it has. So I mean, factually, there's not a basis there. But again, what this is, is uh, among with many other issues that, that we've talked about on your show, critical race theory, you know, stealing elections and everything else, th these are political agendas masquerading as public policy agendas. And this has become the stock and barrel of the far left, is to take an agenda, which is really only designed to put people in power and keep them there, and pretend like it is actually something that you are campaigning for for the good of the community and to dare people to question you. So, for example, when you say, I am saving lives, or you say Black Lives Matter, nobody can challenge you according to this way because it's not, you're, you're there to help the people. So I think a logical question is, is since Black Lives Matter has been in a force in America for now almost two years, what has Black Lives Matter accomplished to make lives better for Black Lives in America? And the answer is, well, other than taking salaries and buying nice homes and taking vacations, there's virtually no evidence that they've actually improved the life in any of community, any community of color, any minority community. Uh, so, you know, the, I think to your point, though, is she is a problem for her party because this this game is demonstrably wearing thin on the American people. They look at the polls. They're not enamored with Black Lives Matter. They're not enamored with defund the police. They're not enamored with people attacking efforts to protect voter integrity. They're not enamored with open borders. And so they may have dr dramatic influence on the Democratic Party, which is a problem because they're running the country. But on, on Americans, increasingly, that rhetoric is not working at all. But I... I think part of the problem here is that we haven't gotten rid of the black racist rock in Wisconsin yet. And, and so that's <laughs> apparently did, something did, we had to do. I, I had to, I had to look that one up. I don't know if folks are really tracking this one. Up. So there's a, a rock, which is a, apparently like many tons. It's a huge rock at the university of Wisconsin, which there's some nickname for it, which is racist, which goes back to some KKK activity on the university in the 1920s, and some students felt offended or threatened by the rock. Yeah. So they moved to the rock to a place where they couldn't threaten them. But it's it's one a two-billion-year-old rock, too. The uh, yes, it's right, the, it's just like, so, I'm not for, hurting anybody. <laughs> the two-billion-year-old rock is racist. For the, for the, but, you know, for she sheds out there, the rock it's called Or the naming a school after Abraham Lincoln or the, what? One of the, not only are we losing our freedom and safety in our streets and everything else, but they're erasing our history and the complexity and wonder of our history. I had a great conversation the other guy with a guy about Andrew Jackson, which is a very, very complex character, a lot mm -hmm. of good and bad in that guy. But to whitewash him completely from history and deny people an understanding and a knowledge of that, that that's just ridiculous. Mm. Um, I wanted to get to your uh, reaction to sort of the big tech part of the big tech biomedical state that is being ushered in. Uh, and that's uh, Apple, uh, Apple, you know, the big company with the phones and the stuff, uh, Apple, uh, while the cultural Marxists in charge of Apple starting at the top, uh, promote uh, K through 12 curriculum that sexualizes children. They're going to monitor, uh, iPhone, iPad messages for porn because, you know, they're very concerned about the children. Um, what's your, do you have any concern about this uh, latest, uh, gambit by Apple? Well, I, I mean, we've warned a lot about the, the politicization of, uh, of, of these companies. And it, this is, again, I think part of this whole campaign, which is to create this notion of a nanny state where we are protecting you and challenging people to come um, back against them. But it's really about, it really it, it feeds a power structure and and um, the what we really want to do like with our universities with with schools with um, so many institutions is you know we want these people to go back to neutral 
whether it's critical race theory in the U.S. military or you know leftist campaigns in in industry, we we want them to stay out of our politics. We want to argue our politics on election day, and have companies be companies and schools be schools and and the military be the military. I mean that's the that has to be the goal because. This is the uh, the consequences of all the kinds of things that Cory Bush stands for. Is that everything becomes an instrument of politics, and it's about getting, securing, and keeping and maintaining power, um, and and not about a, a public debate about well, what's good for Americans. Well, but you know, the military is going in the opposite direction. They're actually doubling down, and you see one more you. Know, DEI plan after another. I mean, the the Naval Academy's plan is is it's just incredible when you read this stuff. Uh, you know, their objective is to uh, have an inviting, safe, and supportive campus where everyone feels they belong and have equitable opportunity for success, regardless of race, ethnicity. They talk about intentionally ha- uh, putting biased literacy into the leadership competencies and leadership classes. Uh, include yeah, well, cultural look, values I mean, inventory. And you, and you and I both understand how how dangerous it is. I mean, I was, I was in the military Horrible. for 25 years, and you know, you, you spend your entire life in the military trying to get other people to look at another person and just see a uniform and 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 focus on service to country. This does the opposite. First of all, it's everything above service to country. Nothing in the statement that you just made is about training leaders to serve their country, and and provide for the common defense. Nothing. So that essentially has ceased to be the mission of what the campus of West Point is all about. And the other thing is, is the, these efforts, which again, are just political power grads to create equity. And they are about dividing people and, and creating ra- racial acrimony, not about erasing um, these kinds of barriers. So the last thing that equity provides is equitable outcomes. The last thing that social justice provides is anything just. And and I I wonder what's wrong with this generation of military leaders. Okay, I understand maybe leftist woke you know people at Apple that live in California and hang out with these people every day. And but the, the military leaders who grew up in a culture of service to nation, how they could so easily and quickly throw that overboard and adopt an obvious partisan political agenda as a doctrine at the academy that's supposed to teach the next generation of military officers. That, to me, that's just, it's mind-boggling. It shows what happens. And I think here's the whole thing. It, it, it so, is, so is uh, Navy SEAL training now going to be inviting? <laughs> and equitable. I'm and not equitable? absolutely sure. And yeah, we'll have equitable outcomes in Navy SEAL training. And, and you know, this is all fun and games. Until it's serious. Until you deploy the military and they get slaughtered on the battlefield. And then then it'll all be about how the military leaders failed it. None of it will be about this politics. But the, but the key point is on all of this is if people do not have the courage to stand up and throw the red flag and say, no, this is not about equity or good or anything else. This is about power, and we have to fight this. If people don't do that, then we will lose. The well, American people will lose. I'll tell you what, and we have a, a local example of exactly what you're talking about. It's all fun and games until somebody's slaughtered on the battlefield with a Chicago police officer who was murdered on Saturday night on um, on the south side. And uh, we're going to talk more about that at 737. But, but anyway, I mean, that's what you're talking about is happening in police departments, too, like Chicago. And, and, and in communities that are burned out and in families that are victimized and— uh, uh, and communities all across the country that that are suffering all kinds of challenges from you know hyper runaway inf- you know runaway inflation to the all the challenges that are brought with uh, open borders, including this horrific opioid epidemic. Um, people are dying everywhere, which is which is why you know Americans largely don't want this agenda, and why leaders have to stand up and start pushing back and not be afraid to oppose something because the other side has framed it in a way that makes it look like they're all for things that are wonderful and bright and shiny. And if you oppose them, you are a racist or evil or the man or whatever. Uh, Jim, before we let you go, was that you I saw dancing with Valerie Jarrett at (laughs) Obama's birthday party? I could have sworn that was you. Uh, It's probably unlikely. Unlikely? Uh, Maybe a Yeah, I would probably, I would probably actually, maybe not win, but definitely come in the top 10 of any contest of people 
not to be invited to Obama's birthday party. <laughs> the Heritage Foundation is Lieutenant Colonel Jim Carafano of the book, Brutal War, Jungle Fighting, Papua New Guinea, 1942. Thanks, Jim. And he joined us on the turnkey.pro answer line. Hear about the big stories of the day, then talk about them right here on Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560. The Answer. Balance of nature is fruits and vegetables in a capsule, changing the world one life at a time. I'm an old guy who takes really good care of himself. When I found your product, I was really glad because if the fruits and vegetables aren't available in the stores, this product is there. But also for the emergency storage situation, if it should be needed when uh, fresh fruits and vegetables are not available through the supply chain. So I'm 75 years old, and you know I pump iron, you know walk five miles uphill. I feel a lot younger than I actually am, and balance of nature has something to do with that. Get a wide variety of all your daily recommended servings of whole fruits and vegetables without having to leave your home. Right now, Balance of Nature is offering free shipping and 35% off on any new preferred order. Call 1-800-2468-751 or go to balanceofnature.com and make sure to receive this special radio offer by using discount code CHICAGO. Guys, I want to encourage you to make your health a priority. It's easier than you think at Low T Center. They're reinventing the doctor's visit, making it quick and easy to get all of your levels checked, not just your testosterone levels. They offer a comprehensive health.